Good morning, this is Vaughan at Westcott Bell Pottery. Um, I've got a couple of kiln unloadings here. Um, I uh, have some sinks, mugs, and the bottles from the video that I did where we were showing how to throw bottles and vases. Um, so uh, let's get to it. This is a cone six, uh, and I had a uh, brief soak at 50 minutes at 22.25. Um, so it's a little lower than 2232, which is cone six. And uh, then I had a 125 degree cool down to 1750, where I held it again for one hour. So, um, so that's the profile for the firing. Okay, so the first one is a sink, and it's the copper bronze glaze that I call. It's in the mastering cone six glaze. It's a beautiful glaze, but you can't use it on food items. So I use it on sinks, vases, and things like that. But uh, anyway, that's a beauty. Then of course we have lots of mugs. I have an order for 48 coffee mugs for a local coffee shop. Um, I should put these around here. So you can continue to see them a little bit. Oh, I've got to lower you down too. Let's see, that looks to be about right. Okay, so, all right, so, there you go. Tenmaku gold with an oatmeal over the top. It always runs a little bit by the handle if you're not careful. It's, this is the glaze I've kind of mastered myself in the, in the use of this because it always looks like this. Yeah. This is the glaze you'll see on the internet called Seafoam. Um, and it always cracks the white clay which is what I used on this piece. Um, and there's a dunting crack right there. It means that the, the glaze has way too much shrinkage rate uh, for the clay body when it does that. So there's a problem. But I think, uh, I don't want to use this on the inside. I like to use a liner glaze. Um, so I've got to figure out what to do with that glaze. I'll, I'll research how to reduce the shrinkage rate of it. So, um, This is a glaze that I actually uh, always get to work as well with my creamy oatmeal and uh, my apple green over the top, which is a rutile green. You can tell because there's the iron in the rutile as well as the copper oxide. Uh, no, it's copper carbonate in that glaze. But it always does this. It's very predictable. And there it is again, always does that kind of nice brown run at the bottom of the green. The glaze is called Licorice in Mastering Cone 6 glazes. Um, it's not one of my favorite glazes and I always put some oatmeal over the top of it, which always melts right in and you get very little of it showing up, but it, it gives it a little bit more interest than just a plain black, I think. You can see a bit more of the oatmeal on the rim there. It just gives the black a little bit more interest. And this one is the uh, matte turquoise, turquoise matte, that I found on Pinterest, actually, I think. Just type in turquoise matte and it will come right up. And it's, it's definitely matte, but I like to use my liner on the inside. Then we have a glaze that I'm not using very often these days, but it's very nice. I mean, it's, this is waxing brown in Mastering Cone 6 glazes. Um, it has a sort of nice waxing quality, I guess. It's not totally shiny, but, uh, but I overlap it with other glazes, uh, like my blue and my oatmeal. But it has a nice sort of color variation, I guess, but it's my least of my favorite of my browns that I do. These, this, these balls are in the speckle clay. Um, that's the blue that I have, bright blue, which tends over the speckle clay to go a bit greeny brown. So I have my blue, my dark blue over it. I can retain, get more of a blue then. And then I did a green swipe over the other edges there with some slip trailing of the color. And all. more of these mugs. Oatmeal with the apple green over. Oh, another sea foam. Let's see what this one did. 
yep, there's a crack in this one too. Very, you can hardly see it, but uh, you just can't use the seafoam uh, with that liner glaze, I guess. That may be the key, Just, but I don't want to use this glaze on the inside of the piece either. So, glaze is a basic test you can do in your studio. If you've got a glaze, you can put some uh, a, a slice of lemon on the glaze, leave it for 24 hours, um, and uh, then basically just lift up the slice of lemon, wipe the plate off. If you can see the ring of the lemon like etched into the glaze, you know the glaze is not food safe. This is Tenmaku Gold again. Without the fluting, it actually doesn't have those runs down. This is where I do the fluting and you get a lot more of my oatmeal on it. I always do that on purpose. Another one of the apple green over oatmeal. This is a real nice one. I think this one will sell immediately when I put it in the gallery. These are very small sinks, about 13 and a half inches across, so they're meant for powder rooms. And this one I sell, this one will be like 225 Canadian dollars. Ooh, here we go. Ah, oh, this is interesting. This is my dark blue. I didn't, I must have dipped it less than normal because it's a lot lighter but the fluting on it is very nice the way it shows up and i had i'm well, not sure what i did over the top i got my oatmeal on the bottom but on the top i had another dip of something else and i'm not sure what it was i think it was just another dip of my blue but um maybe i did the green over there because it looks a bit green this is my apple green over the turquoise Hard to know. That one doesn't look like it cracked, um, but it could be the matte turquoise. But look how much it ran. So I'll have a lot of grinding on that one to do. I bet it sits level, but but, um, but these are the waxing brown. I've always liked the variegated blue in that book with waxing brown. It always looks nice, and that's what those two are. Very nice combination. If you're a beginning studio, you shouldn't, you should try making probably three base glazes in your studio, or two is probably better, and then adding colorants and stuff to them. Uh, oh, that's interesting, a little bubble came up on that one just there. But uh, that's a refire. And there's another one of the waxing brown or it could be my tomato red. I think it's waxing brown. A nice bowl. This is the speckle clay with the bright blue over it. Um, and the same as the other bowl, basically. But look how they look so different. This, this was held in the glaze a lot longer. And that one just must have been in and out. This is my dark green glaze. Oh, I'm lucky they didn't run more than that. They ran right to the bottom of the piece without sticking to the kiln shell. That was a bat washed kiln shell too. But look at that, right to the bottom on both of them. So that was like only a 15 minute soak too. But, uh, but it's a dark green glaze, I really like it. It's double the amount of green basically. No rutile in the, gl in the glaze, but just uh, copper carbonate, I can't remember the percentage, but I've always liked that dark green. And now it's a whole bunch of pieces that ran the dark green. I'll have to knock this off. I don't know if I could do that quickly. Quite often you just have to tap it and the stilt will come right off. But I've got grinding to do on these. So I've got to remember that combination doesn't work very well. It runs too much. 
And that's, I think, my dark green and my uh, apple green glazed over the top of each other. And they all ran, so I've got to do some work on those. Oh, one of them didn't run. I wonder what the difference is. In those. Just have to remember not to glaze very far down because you can get away with it. Because I like the running, but I just have to remember not to glaze very far down when I do the second dip. So this is the second kill. Um, and these are those bottles that I threw. That's very pretty. So these are going to be bud vases or sake bottles for putting wine and serving wine in. I think they'd be very, you need a little plastic funnel to put the wine in there, or maybe you can do it, but, um, but basically that's very pretty. Got some nice variations in color on that piece. I wiped the bottom of these because they're so narrow, um, but that's the black with the actual oatmeal over the top just to give it some interest. This is my dark blue with the oatmeal on the top. And there was a, oh, I did brush work on these too. So I took a big wide hake brush and just splashed with the brush downwards over them to give them a little bit more interest in the bottom color area. But the fluting shows up nicely on the top. I tried a very simple variation on this and that's nice. This is my white glaze with the gray glaze over the top. And that turned out very nice. I can see that with a nice bright color flower in there. Then there's my usual Tenmaku gold with the oatmeal. That always looks good. And this was, I loved throwing these pieces with the big belly at the bottom. Tenmaku gold with the oatmeal on it. So these are, turned out very nice. It's a challenge to throw a form like that. Here's the turquoise, oops, here's the turquoise. Uh, or is it sea foam? This is sea foam again, so it didn't crack on these ones. Interesting. Yeah, I wonder, I think, I just don't remember what I put on the inside of that, but it didn't crack, which is really nice because I like that piece a lot. I'll put some photographs at the end of the video showing these. That's my apple green, just straight on its own. Isn't that a nice apple color green? And there's another one of the bottles. This is the blues, the bright blue, with some brushwork on it in the shoulder area here. variegated blue with oatmeal on the top and some brushwork with the other blue. Some brushwork on the shoulder of that piece. But this is my, I wonder what gray glaze that is. It's sort of a green, I don't remember what base glaze that is. And this is a glaze that's got a little bit of iron. It's my blue glaze. I put about 1% of iron in there as well. And it just takes away the blue and gives you more of a greeny, uh, deep greeny blue, I guess. And then we've got a whole bunch of coffee mugs that have been dipped in two or three glazes. So there's a multi multiple glazing on these, bright blue, dark blue oatmeal on that piece. 
This one has variegated blue. Bright uh, number, f well, I think it's my bright blue with the, iron, with the iron oxide in it with some variegated blue and oatmeal on it. And this one is the variegated blue, which always runs. When you use this glaze, it always runs down a lot on the bottom, variegated blue. I dipped it in a long time. 10 seconds uh, just to try because it always does this beautiful color when you do that because it runs but you always end up grinding a little bit on the bottom if they sit level i don't see why you have to grind and same with this one so i'll have to grind the stilt off as well which means i've lost the stilt that glaze is a glaze that is so beautiful that you kind of think well how can i perfect this but every time i do it there's always the running and if you dip it just for a little while, it comes out sort of greenish color, so. It's called variegated blue in the Mastering Cone 6 glazes. This one ran too. And I don't know, this was only a 15 minute soak. So um, this is not that long a soak, but that's my greens. It's not much grinding on that one, just a little bit. But they're all the same. I'm gonna have to lose the stilt on them. The greens are the ones that are running the most by the look of it. Yeah, every one of them. Got some grinding. Okay, here's another copper bronze sink. And that's a beauty too. Very elegant. Feels like it should be in a Roman spa somewhere. and get you a bit closer so here we go tenmiku gold with my oatmeal this is the one that's called mouse brown with a dip of oatmeal over it I think none of these are running at all so Uh, another one of my white. Look at the gray over the top where the fluting is. Or graffito carving. That turned out very nice. That's actually what I was looking for. When I was doing the fluting, I was hoping that that would create marks in there. That's a very pretty little bud vase. It's, oh, it's the oatmeal clay with my uh, oatmeal glaze and the mouse brown gray over the top there's another one then we've got the black again the oatmeal is soaked into the black completely if you underfire this black you can make the oatmeal stand out a bit more and I do actually do a cone for firing with some of my pieces uh, where I use a clear glaze that I could throw some of these in and they would look totally different. And, but you would have to make sure that the black glaze is only on the outside of the things because uh, cone four means it would be under fired and I'm not sure about its food safety then. So I have a, a clear glaze that's perfect for cone four. Whenever I do cone four, it's mostly just for my clear glaze pieces where I do the stenciling. Really pretty little bud vases. It's that time of year. Yeah, it's nice outside today. Oh, look at the gray. This is the variegated blue. Didn't run. So it means I can get it. Just got to figure out the number of seconds and the specific gravity of the glaze.
last one. Sometimes you save the best to last. Look at that one. Very pretty. The outside's nice too. Another seafoam mug. Is it cracked? No, I don't see a crack in this one. The mysteries. So I'll pour boiling water into this one and test it. That's that's where they usually crack if they are going to. If you think you have a glaze problem, you should always pour boiling water in your piece before you sell it. Tenmuku gold, look at that little down there. Isn't that pretty? I wonder how I did that. That's a total one of a kind. Yeah, they usually look like this. Oh, little run there. I'll have to grind that one off. Another little bud vase. Very nice. That, gr that variegated blue when it works is really pretty. This is my turquoise with my oatmeal over the top. That's a summer color. And there's the black with the oatmeal that sort of disappears in the black. My oatmeal has tin oxide in it, so it's pretty good opaque glaze, and yet it still gets absorbed by that black. That's the turquoise mat with some blue over the top. It almost looks bronze on the bottom there. Another one. I wonder if this, I'm not sure if that has a crack or not. Yep, that one has a crack too. So I was gonna say, cause this seafoam glaze, I would say it's cracking 90% of the pieces. See, oh, look at the mat, the turquoise mat is very beautiful over the speckled clay. And some more with the variegated blue, so we're definitely going to have to skip doing that glaze too much. It works, so I think because I added the dark blue over it, um, and that's what you get, how you get those speckles, and that's when it makes it run. We might have to fire these upside down again. And there's my bright yellow that I don't use very much with my green over the top of it, but it always looks nice when I do that. Okay, so that was two cones, six firings, 22, 25. Problems with variegated blue and my apple green when I double dip them, the variegated blue with the dark blue over the top, it's causing a lot of running. And the apple green, when I dip my dark green over the top, is also causing a lot of running. And the dark green and the dark blue that I use are the same glaze base. So it's definitely that combination. Um, so I'm gonna have to make notes of that. And that's a good thing to do. I have a, pad, a little clip file there that I keep notes uh, telling me which glazes beware of and stuff so I'm going to add those two to that list. All right so this is Westcote Bell Pottery in La Hague, Nova Scotia saying stay safe and take care of yourselves. Bye.